All right, so today we're getting today we're getting to unit three. So I'm going to go to present here. All right, so we've uh, we finished units one and two of the Google Certified Educator, you know, level two training. Level two is the advanced training. And now we're on uh, level three. So level three is a little bit longer. Um, it's broken down to four sections, as you can see here. Uh, create and share calendar for parents and students. Then um, let advanced features do the work for you. And now when I say advanced features, they, they're kind of focusing on Gmail. Um, so, you know, it's going to be calendar, then Gmail. Then it's going to be a, a Chrome apps and extension, sharing them with your students. Although with this section here, a lot of it's actually done by the you know, uh, they have like domain administr administrators and, and, you know, really, really into teachers that, that'll do this, but I'll get to it. And lastly, um, a supercharging task automation. So it's add-ons and scripts and things like that. And the Google Certified Educator test really focuses more on the add-ons, not really scripts that much. All right, so let's get to it. Okay, excuse me. All right, so here's the task list. Um, sh you have to be able to share a calendar create appointment slots and enable advanced settings in Gmail okay if you have this uh, this Google Slides presentation you can just click here and I'll take you to one of my videos and I'll show you how to do it how to do this you can click here I'll show you how to do this and you can click here I'll show you how to do this um, however if you don't have the slides presentation it's it's in this I have a playlist here so you can find it in the playlist but if you have the slides presentation you can just click there and, and go to it um, okay these two um, these next two tasks, uh, that that's the that's going to be like the domain administrator, or, you know, and you'll have like a Google, like the technology person in your school will take care of that. And it's really like school administrators too. And lastly, manage add-ons. You could click here, and, and it would take you to that. Now, if you want this slides presentation, you can go down, and uh, I'll have a, the, a link in the description, or you could just hang out here, and I'll go through it. But uh, this presentation, um, if you want this slides, it's it'll be in the description. Okay, so create a shared calendar for parents and students. Okay. All right, so this is the video here. Um, it's a whole calendar video. I'm not going to let it play and everything like that from the beginning. Um, it, it's it's in the playlist. Okay, I just, but I'll let you see what it looks like. So it's the top 10 tasks. And I, I was sure to include the tasks that, that we need for this training, and it's got some other ones. So now, create a shared calendar for parents and students, okay? So sometimes you want to create a, sp a specific calendar, whether it be for like a club or something like that, or just for a classroom, and, you know, that's what this really focuses on. So uh, first off, it says this section is stay informed. Educators need to be able to communicate the details of important events with their most important audiences, the most important audiences, which are the students and the, and students and the parents or guardians. I, I guess they said uh, guardians instead of parents. Now, by leveraging the flexibility of G Suite for Education, an educator can easily create a communication plan that meets the needs of different audiences using tools already at their disposal. Okay, what are the tools? So the two prominent tools used to communicate are going to be Google Calendar and Google Classroom. Uh, this section, though, is going to focus more on Classroom. There's a whole section on Calendar, you know, I mean, excuse me, there's a whole section on classroom later on, right? So you want to communicate different events, important events here. You want to communicate details, create a communication plan. You're looking at Google, Cal uh, Google Calendar. Now, um, stay, uh, stay informed. How do you keep the parents informed? All right, so Google Calendar has the option to make any of its calendars public. So anyone can see events, whether they have a Google account or not. You can do that. I don't like making things... Uh, I don't like making things public, to be honest here, um, especially with the world the way it is. And, and you know, you don't want to, especially if you're teaching younger grades, you know what I mean? Don't put any of that public because there's, a, you know, a lot of creeps out there. They could want to see where the, where the kids are. Um, but, you know, it's it's an option if, you know, if, you know, if it's nothing dangerous or whatever. Now, a more unique feature, okay, available only to G Suite for Education account it, is the appointment slots, okay? So educators can select an interval of time during which a Google user, during which Google users can schedule an appointment. So this is kind of like when you're in college and, and you know your professor's like, hey, I, I have office hours from one to three, which is like their their typical office hours. And um, you used to have to just go there and write in a piece of paper, or you would just go to to your professor and just see see if they're there. Uh, so a lot of times they weren't. 
Um, this way, it's just an appointment slot. You, instead of like writing on the professor's door, you just go into calendar and they just fill in an appointment slot. And you can set how long you want those appointments to be. You can make them 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You can set aside, you know, 30 minutes. It's it's all there for the choosing. Now, again, right, we said Google Classroom, you can send email summaries to provide uh, more detailed information on, on their child's education. Remember, Google Classroom is also a way to get information out. A Guardian email summaries deliver snapshots of activity via email without educators taking additional action. Okay. Now, Guardian email summaries sometimes have to be turned on by the domain administrators. All right. So adding class structure with calendar. Okay. By creating a Google Calendar that's separate from the default calendar. Now, you always have a default calendar, but you can create a, you can create multiple calendars in Google Calendar. So you know, educators can keep their personal appointments separate from their classroom appointments. And then, you know, when you get there, you can actually toggle calendars on and off. This is all in the video. You can uh, create separate calendars for clubs. You can have a calendar for a professional development timetable, you know, anything else you might need. Uh, by default, every calendar you create is private, viewable only to its owner and creator. Now, that's by default. You can always change that. To allow others to see the calendar, you can go into sharing permissions and it needs to be set so students and parents can see can see the events listed okay so adding class structure with calendar like we said appointment slots can can be set up for Google Calendar to help educators meet with students or parents or you know uh, staff these appointments will appear on both your calendar and the calendar of the person who reserved the time so when guardians join the classroom they receive regular automatic emails uh, so when when guardians join Google Classroom, they receive regular automatic email summaries for each of their students. Guardians choose the frequency of the emails, whether it could be daily, weekly. They can unsubscribe at any time. So with Classroom, they're talking more uh, about uh, you know uh, uh, email summaries, and with Calendar, they're focusing on appointment slots. All right, so here's the test list for for this section. Right, create an events calendar. Share the view of a calendar, create appointment slots, uh, set up guardian emails. Again, this is all, you know, these are all quick links. So you click them and I'll show you right how to do it. Click them, I'll show you how to do it. Click them, you know. Um, I'm not doing it right now because it, it'll open it up and it'll ruin this whole presentation. But believe me, it's all in my videos. All right, so here's just a quick look, right? Uh, create an events calendar. Go, go down to the add calendar and press the three dots. You see right here. Then click the create new calendar. You see right here this little blue thing. I try to color code it, right? So the look at this. This is red and I make this red. This is blue and I make this blue. This is green and, and I make this green, right? So click create new calendar and then just add information. Okay. Share the view of a calendar. Okay. Um, find the calendar you want. Click the three dots. So I'm clicking the three. The, find the calendar I want. I click the three dots. You go to settings and sharing, right? Then click on settings and sharing. And then click access permissions and you can see the sharing permissions. So here, if you take a look here, it says make available to public. I said I don't like to do that, right? Um, do I want to make it available to the Hasbro Heights uh, school district? Sure. Okay, that means everybody in my district, right? So everybody can see. And then do I want to share with specific people? All right, create appointment slots. Okay. You must be in week or day view. Then click on a time. A box, a box opens and then select appointment slots. So th this is, and, and, you know, I think they've upgraded it where if you just go to create, you might be able to do that here. But this way definitely works, right? So you must be in day or week view. Click on a time. Okay. And if you see up here, it's, it's week view. This I go over all this in the video a little bit more detailed, but it's on week view. You click on a time, and then right there, you'll see appointment slots. And I think even if you press create and you're not in week view, you might be able to just get to appointment slots. Okay. And then once you get there, you just, you know, you could set your slot duration. Okay. You could do 30, you know, 30 minutes and, and then however long, and then you could put how much each appointment is. So it gets detailed. All right, so set up guardian email summaries, right? To turn on guardian email summaries for your class, you know, you have to go to settings. But listen, sometimes the administrators in your school will will take care of this themselves, okay? So uh, guardian emails are turned off by default. You can turn them on for the entire class, but remember, it's the school admin that decides, 
and gives permission. Okay, create a shared calendar for parents and students. Teacher to guardian communication. How can you make sure guardians have all the needed information? Okay, so how do you make sure these parents get everything they want? You can create a separate, a separate calendar event dedicated to conference windows. You could use Google Sites to create a new page dedicated to, to this calendar. Or you can use an existing page in a Google Site. Uh, insert a menu to add content, colors, etc. Find a time within Google Calendar in which you can create appointment slots. Okay, that, that keeps coming up, right? And notify the guardians that it's time for them to schedule for their conference by reserving an appointment slot that best fits their schedule, right? So you could tell the guardians, um, you know, you could tell, you know, notify that, like it says, notify the guardians that it's time for them to schedule their a, a, a conference by reserving an appointment slot, but it has to fit their schedule. All right, so here, here are the questions. This is a quick review, right? I feel like going back and reviewing this. Um, you know what? I, 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 th I think we'll be all right here. All right, so making appointment slots is only available to users that are on G Suite for Education and work domains, but registering for someone else's appointment slot is available only with to users with any account. This is a little bit tricky. Yeah, true, right? So if you want to make appointment slots, if you want to be the one that makes them, it's only available to users that are on the G Suite for Education and the work or, or, or G Suite for work domains. But registering for someone else's appointment slot is available to anyone with a Google account. So if you're using your G Suite account, you have the ability to create the appointment slot. A slot. Now, somebody with just a regular Google account can. It's all right. It's all right. Some, somebody with just a. Who is it? Somebody with just a, a regular Google account can you know, can take one of those slots. However, if they just have a regular Google account, they can't create their own appointment slots. So only if you have a G Suite for Education can you create the appointment slots, and then anybody with just a Google a, a slot, uh, anybody with just a Google account can join. So that was a good question. All right, in order to allow parents to see the new calendar, Mr. Jones must make it what? He must make it public, okay? It is, it, it is, it is what it is, okay? Like I said, I have my own personal things about making it public. You, you know, you could, remember, you could also share it with, with them, but, I mean, these are the options they, they gave you. You can also put them down, uh, like a specific parent's uh, a Gmail, and only let them see it. But, like, what options did they have here, right? Private isn't going to work. Local isn't going to work. Sorry. Social isn't going to work. So, a public would allow them to see it. Okay, Guardian email summaries from Google Classroom are, and we talked a lot about these uh, uh, email summaries, so what do we say? They are sent to Guardians regularly based on preferences. Available for setup for G Suite for Education teacher accounts. By default, every user on G Suite for Education receives a personal calendar as well as a classroom calendar. True or false? False. Okay. And so let advanced features do the work for you. Uh, this is a video here. Now it says Google Labs, but um, let me read this here. According, uh, so canned responses was changed to templates, and they got rid of Labs. It's more advanced features now. It's basically the same stuff. Labs was just like a, it was like a test, and and now they just kind of got advanced features. So, uh, get more out of Gmail. The advanced tab, uh, the advanced features tab includes uh, features that can be turned on or off to enhance the Gmail experience. So, that, like, I don't want to say they're add-ons, but, you know, because you don't have to go and, and, and go through the whole process. They're right there for you already. Uh, but, you know, they, they kind of supercharge the experience, right? So, uh, by customizing Gmail with these features, you can become much more efficient and save valuable time. Advanced features have replaced Gmail lab section, okay? And with this advanced features, can responses has been replaced to templates, okay? I'm going to say that again. Um, experimenting with features. All right, so turning on and locating advanced features is the first step, okay? So the first thing you have to do is find this section. 
there's a special section for advanced features in Gmail. Um, just like almost everything to get to settings. And this, listen, this is a good tip here. We're, we're almost all, whenever you're getting for settings, you're going to go to this little gear icon, go down to settings, and then it, and then you would just go to advanced features tab. It'll, it'll be right up there on the top. There's a video, of course, where I show you this. Again, a can responses has been changed to templates. Okay, here's an article explaining the change the names and how it's a little bit different. I just the only difference in my video I said uh, can responses. I'm making a new Gmail video very soon, and I'll I'll just change it to templates. Okay, you can use templates as weekly reminders for homework assignments, parent communication, frequently asked questions uh, uh, by parents and things like that. So this is some of the uses of what you can do with templates and template. And I'm going to get into more detail on templates on the next slide, but it's like just saving things that you frequently write. So let's say you're constantly saying you know um what's something with with a parent uh, let's say you're constantly saying to to a to a, a parent um you know um did you speak with your child first you know what i mean because they might see a grade and then the first thing they do right so a parent sees a grade and it's like a 50 and the first thing they do is is or no or they see a zero and the first thing they do is email you it's like oh why did my son daughter get a zero it's like well did you talk to your daughter or son first because they'll tell you they didn't do it so, you know, maybe like a template is, is you know, um, please talk to your son or daughter. For, have you talked to your son or daughter yet before you even waste your time responding? All right, so experimenting with features. Do you find that you're retyping? If so, if you're constantly retyping or copying and pasting the same information multiple, you know, into multiple emails, that's when you want to use a template to save yourself time. And time is valuable for educators. So by saving the email text as a template, you know, you'll spend less time recreating emails using custom keyboard shortcuts okay a, a lab I, and I just gotta take that word lab out um, using custom uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, you can create your own you can even create your own shortcuts and you know you can get things done more efficiently um, they have now just a list of keyboard shortcuts, almost everything almost everything you want there. And in the video, I'll, I'll show you what the keyboard shortcuts are. And it's quick for, for Gmail. Like, like the most, like, like the best shortcut would be like, like to just compose, just to open up an email. Or, you know, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of times we think like not learning these, these shortcuts are a good idea because it takes too much time. But think about like learning control C and control V how valuable that is so sometimes you know we're gonna be using Gmail for the next probably 20 years or something like that so you know you can go and learn these uh, shortcuts and I might I think I'm gonna add a shortcut uh, a list of the shortcuts here like uh, I'll, like I'll take a screenshot so everybody could see um, I'm gonna add this to, to this PowerPoint it's probably a good idea okay in Google Calendar you can attach items to your events and use calendar attach uh, and use calendar attachments this allows you to like attach course materials. Uh, all right, so uh, be able to perform the following tasks. Okay, finding and enabling advanced features. That's what we said is the important one. Uh, save times with the template. I have that here. And customizing a, a keyboard shortcuts to customize your Gmail. Okay, so the advanced features, right? We said, right? So finding and enable. So the green settings, what do we want to do? The gear icon, go down to settings. Then you go to advanced. And then, you know, boom. Okay, it was formerly, you know, labs or whatever. And then you can go down here and see, so you go to gear, icon, settings, advanced, and then just see see what it is, right? I see templates, canned responses. Okay, All right, so canvas, so, so it says canned responses. This just means a, a templates, right? I wrote template here too. So here's here's the process. Okay, I'm gonna try to go over this here. So first you have to reply to an email. So let's say, Let's say um, you get an email. Um, you know, why did my student get a? Why did my son get a zero? And you maybe want to say, did you talk to your son first? So the first thing you have to do is reply to the email. This little red right here. Then you have to enter what you're going to say. Or, so for in, in this case, maybe they ask you a question. You're not around, and you just want to have your your template. If you could look down here, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So then, okay. So you press reply. You type in something that you frequently write. So it's I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Now, after you do that, you know, you have to click this, these three little dots, this more icon here. Okay. Now, after you hit the more icon, then you're going to go to template, save draft as template, or save as a, a new template. Okay. So, 
this is the process here. Okay, so you have to reply to an email. You're going to write in whatever your template's going to be. You're going to hit these three little dots. You're going to go to the, you know, the template here, and then you're going to you're going to save as a new template and then enter it's going to come here enter a name this is your last step enter the lastly enter in the new template name in the pop-up so it's kind of color coded here maybe you want to stop this and review it okay customizing keyboard shortcuts okay first click the gear uh, first click the gear uh, then the settings just like always right the gear settings go to keyboard shortcuts and then find the shortcut that you desire oh so yeah I do have a list of shortcuts here right check it out I mean you can change it I think like here it's a composer C but I threw in a six for some reason or you can you know these these are the shortcuts okay so you you, you go to the gear the settings keyboard and then you could add your own here you could customize it basically because you're going to click this keyboard shortcuts and then you know like take a look right so what do we have here right the compose in a tab is D right so maybe you want to put something else you could but don't do so you can't do something that's taken maybe the number nine so I'll, or the number uh, four or the number three whatever so just you know all right, so making advanced features work for you. Uh, Gmail has this multiple inboxes that allows you to, to see sets of emails in different panes. Let's say, go, you know, a window pane on the same page. With multiple inboxes, you can have the main inbox on the left side of the screen and have smaller inboxes shown separately. Okay, so that, that's, that's one cool feature. You could set up a filter that automatically labels any emails from the school leadership or parents as vital. Um, what else? Uh, you could set a second inbox to show email drafts to save from having to click back and forth. Uh, this recon you know, this recognizes areas of our lives that can be made more efficient, basically, right? So again, we're talking about advanced features here, and it's saying it's just trying to to make email to make Gmail more efficient for us. So you know, with, like we said, with the multiple inboxes. So you can have, you know, uh, open at the same time and you could, you know, set up a filter where one's vital. So basically just the advanced features want, want to make it a little bit easier for you, a little more efficient. Okay. Let advanced features do the work for you. Advanced features can only, can only be enabled by a system administrator. False. Okay. You could do it on your own. Okay. You can do it right now. Um, well, uh, which of the following are advanced features in Gmail? Auto advance, unread message icon. Those two, and you can go in and you know check it out. And and listen, and and you would know this by exploring yourself here, right? So maybe you don't know this when when you're doing it, but if if you you know watch the video, if you go on and try it yourself, you'll see some of them. So you know, like the best way to to learn, listen, the best way to learn this this prepare for this Google Unit Two, is to you know. It's, it's to watch the test videos, but more importantly to, you know, then try them on your own. Okay. Uh, using advanced features, the chat box can be relocated to which part of the screen? To the right part of the screen. Again, this is in, in, in advanced features. So these questions, I, I suggest you go to your Gmail and go to the advanced features section and then, you know, try for yourself. Give it a look. Can responses can help you to what? Save templates to save the same information multiple times. Um, and I, I jumped back. It, it used to have a, a save custom email signatures. This is a new feature here. So, you know, maybe a couple months ago, this was one of the, the answer choices. But now they have their own little signature thing here. I mean, you and if you read, if you go through this Google training, um, in one part of, of this section, it says that it does mention email signatures, but it says... It, it, it says to make like multiple different email signatures okay so like I just took the like I just took this uh, this test beforehand and and previously I had this this one on uh, this one was one of the answers now I just took it and it has just just this one the uh, as the answer but I think it's because they have a, a new they they took this off because they have a new uh, email signature I'm gonna go back and double check this okay 
sh share Chrome apps and extensions with your students. And again, this is show some of the tasks in the video. Okay, uh, Google Chrome is a fast, secure, extendable. It works on all operating systems and devices. I just put out a 2000, uh, 2020 to 2021 video I made like a week ago on Google Chrome. It does everything. It shows you all shortcuts, tricks, and things like that. I'm going to try to embed it into this section too. Um, Third-party develop developers can integrate the functionality of their applications with Chrome to make it even more powerful. There are two main approaches to remember. Extensions and apps. Okay. There are also add-ons which work with specific Google tools such as Docs and Sheets but are independent of Chrome. Okay. So the add-ons, remember, like there's add-ons specific for, for Google Slides. There's an add-on specific for Google Docs. Okay. The extensions, you know, you're going to get from, from the Chrome. Okay, I'm, I, like if, if you look at the, the top right here, and it'll be in my Google video, you could see all the extensions in your Chrome, like, like on the top right, right up there. Okay, now both apps and extensions can be found in the Chrome Web Store. And apps have more functionality than extensions. Extensions work by integrating fully with Chrome. Like I said, extensions are with the Chrome thing. You can kind of find it up here, and they extend the capabilities of Chrome. So they just make Chrome better really. Uh, extensions are simply an extension of the Chrome browser. Okay, Apps are like web-based versions of software applications that typically install on a computer. But instead it's, it's a web base. So it's not being installed. However, apps don't need to be installed on the hardware because they live in the cloud. Chrome apps are simply launchers for web-based software. So they're just launchers. Um, sharing and managing apps and extensions. The ability to share apps and extensions is built right into the Chrome Web Store. In a few clicks, you can have all your students up and running with extensions that they need for the class. Now, if your school has Chromebooks and uses a Chrome management setting, administrators, they, what they do is they push extensions onto the students, which means they'll automatically be installed. So, the administrators, they push these extensions on the students. Um, next up, all right. So, if your school runs Chromebook that are centrally managed with device management, you can also pre-install and whitelist particular apps and extensions for students, done by a domain administrator. So, what does whitelist mean? That you know, like if you hear blacklist, like those are the ones you can't have. Whitelists are like the ones that you can have. Okay, and uh, you know, I got a little confused when I first saw the word whitelist. I was like, what is that? And then I had to. So, whitelist, it's it's what you're okay to have. Um, admin can for can force install pin apps to the shelf, and they can create a custom web store homepage for users in your domain. Now, a private Chrome app collection can also be curated and restricted to your domain. Okay, with this setup, your students will only see pre-approved pre apps. Now, a lot of this might be like a, a, like. You, you you know it might be a little confusing uh, uh, again a lot of this this app extensions the apps and extensions that's that's you know taken care of by the school domain administrator and, and sometimes they don't let you so a, a lot of this the, the teacher really don't have to worry about all right so you should be able to perform the the following task right so these two the domain admin okay really just sharing Chrome apps and extensions and you do that just by going to the Chrome web store copying the link and then just emailing it to your students and here, here I'll show you right how to do it, right? So sharing, enter the Chrome Web Store. I go to Chrome Web Store. Um, here, I enter the Chrome Web Store. You would type it on, on, you know, in the address bar. So enter the Chrome Web Store here. Select the app. Let's say it's Cami, and then I copy the link. So once you get here, so I'm on the, so I select this. Here's the web page for Cami. I copy the link, and then I just got to email it. So I got this little email picture here. Okay. All right, share Chrome apps and extensions with students. Educational apps and extensions. Uh, have students tracking down, evaluating apps in the web store. Students brainstorm a list of keywords to search the store. This is one thing you can have them do. It. it this is what the Google Training Center says, right? Or, or now it's called Skillshop. You know, have students track down apps, let them evaluate it. Uh, break the kids into different groups with one group researching the app and the other group looking for extensions. Students can use the features filter and they can do star ratings. 
um, you know, they can narrow to narrow down the list. And down here it just says, remember, apps and extensions they to enrich your class, you know, to, to make it a better workflow, just to make learning better for you, for the teacher and the student. What's up? Oh, okay. Apps generally have more functionality than extensions. True. And I, I think that was one of the, the bullets in there. Uh, where can you find Chrome apps and extensions? The Chrome Web Store. Okay. And that comes up a lot, the Chrome Web Store. How can you share apps and extensions with your class even if you don't have Chromebooks? Emailing the link from the Chrome Web Store, just like I showed you, right? Um, I don't know, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know if as a teacher you're going to be able to, to use this much of Google Plus community. Um, email the Chrome Web Store link to a Google group through email address. Okay. Chrome apps and extensions can be force installed on Chromebooks in your education domain. Is that true? True. Okay. Supercharge task automation. Here we go. All right. So do more with G Suite. Add-ons are additional features created by third-party developers who identify needs and address them using the open infrastructure of G Suite and extend the functionality of G Suite. Add-ons are created using Google Apps, uh, Google Apps Script, which is a language based on JavaScript, and it provides a way for students that are you know, interested in coding to work on real-world problems. There are three separate sets of add-ons uh, that are each related to a different core product in G Suite for Education, Docs, Forms, Sheets. Okay, so those are the three. All right. So you can easily find the add-ons uh, menu bar in several of Google tools and, and slides, doc sheets. Listen, there's add-ons. It's not here, but uh, there's add-ons you can get to in in the Google Forms. Okay, it's on the side actually. So you know, add-ons and docs is easy right here. Add-ons and, and slides is easy right there. Sheets would be the same thing. Forms is a little different. You would, if it was forms, you would see it on the side here. You would have to click. A, a, if I remember correctly, it's like a little three lines, I think. No, sorry, three dots. It would open up more, and then you would see you would see the add-ons there, just from memory. All right, so uh, do more with G Suite. Uh, do more with G Suite. So add-ons make many things possible, and this is right from the, the Google, uh, you know, the Skillshop uh, Trainer Center. You can do mail more, uh, uh, mail merge, automatically creating quizzes from documents. You can. Um, Automatically grade quizzes using Google Forms, uh, providing individualized feedbacks to students, creating citations. This is a good one here. I use this for my for my college uh, papers and things like that. Okay, you got to find good ones though. Some of them are trash. You got to find the good ones. Um, some of them they don't work, but you know uh, I, for, I forget the one. I forget the. I'll, I'll, maybe I'll show that next time. All right, uh, distributing documents and folders to students more quickly. Like these are just you know many things possible, all from add-on. All right, so getting started with add-ons, right? Finding and installing them. Add-ons can only be installed directly from within Google Docs, Sheets, Forms. Oh yeah, they do have Forms now. Okay, you can also search the name or keyword and filter, you know, including education category. Using and managing add-ons. Each add-on will have its own set of options. Most are found under the the flyout menus, under the the main add-ons fly uh, the the, med, uh, the main add-ons file menu. If you want to manage or remove an add or select manage add-ons, um, you do that from the menu. This sounds a, a little tricky. It's it's you got to watch the video and, and it explains it much easier. All right, send personalized emails. Two add-ons that may be helpful include yet another mail merge and Formule. Both take uh, both of these take data that's stored in a spreadsheet and use and use text placeholders to merge that information into 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 the email body. Yet uh, yet another mail merge uses a Gmail drafts, while Formule has a variety of different email templates. Create personalized documents. Autocrat. That's a, a document uh, merge add-on that works from uh, data stored in spreadsheet, and it merges it with a template that's uh, that's saved in Doc. Start with a Google Doc and design your own. Now, listen. In all honesty, here, you know, you don't have to get too 
too personal here with like with this for the Google Certified Educator Level Two test. You're not gonna. Have, you don't need to know how to work these things. Okay, they're just really giving you some background. What you need to know how to do is to find and install add-ons, and you gotta manage them. How to delete them. Okay, and that all goes back to where is it? That all go. That's all one of the tasks. I think it was it was earlier on in one of my click things. So you don't have to. Don't worry. Don't you know? Don't go and and have to learn all this. It's it's not that. It, that's not what's going to be in the test. All right. So easing the assessment process. Okay. Uh, use G Suite to make the assessment process much easier. All right. So sheets. Okay. And and what I did here is I try to. I tried to summarize these the best I can. Okay. So not you know they don't give you this on under the, the trainer webs on the Skillshop website. So. This is my own way here. So Fluberu is used to grade quizzes already found in forms. Gubrick extends the functionality of Doctopus. That sounds like a James Bond film, something like that. Uh, best for rubrics, differentiate and send files to groups of students. Uh, doc, doc Appender takes info from forms and appends it into the bottom of the form. Uh, doc to form. This thing's blocking me off here. Uh, can convert text documents into into forms. All right. So, which of the following apps can you not find add-ons for? All right. So, w what here did I not mention? Really? Right. I didn't mention Google Keep, so that's not going to be it. Uh, which of the following is true? Add-ons. Uh, well, add-ons extend the functionality of G Suite. Yeah, we said that. Um, you know, I'm, I gonna not get into the rest of the reasons why they're not true but like here like add-ons and chrome apps they're not the same thing there's a whole the whole section says how they're different so i'm not gonna get into those details okay add-ons are created using google apps apps script select all that apply yeah i just mentioned right app script is based on javascript and it provides a way for students with coding interests to create their own add-ons okay you know google's trying to push coding i think it's called C first or something like that uh, with the students. When you come across something in, in a G Suite app that you would like to be able to do but don't think you should, select all that apply. Okay. And this is a word a little tricky. Okay. Search the help center to see if what to see if you can do it uh, using core functionality. Search add-ons menu for an add-on that that might cut off here I think this might work search web for ideas and search Chrome for an extension that might so remember what is Google known for right well, what's 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 their best feature what they start off with their, their best thing is search right so you know they want you to search Google so it makes sense here that you know every answer is selected it all with search okay so they want you know you can Google's great for searching right search the help center search add-ons search the web search the Chrome store even if you're taking the test search around and see what you can find all right so now we're going to the to the review okay um, unit 3 review use advanced features to optimize work okay so this is all all the units to enable people to make appointments when using appointment slots, you have to share the URL of your appointment slots page. How does your appointment slots page differ from a normal public view of a Google Calendar? All right, so you would know this by watching the video. There are buttons to book an appointment slot. Is your answer. All right, so number two now. Uh, which of the following can be used to customize your Google Calendar? How do you customize it? Density and color, right? You can make them all. You could make them different colors and things like that. Um, I think density is found in the, the upper right-hand corner. Actually, I think you got to press those three little dots now. They may have changed it, but again, it's all in the video. A colleague has included you on an email that is irrelevant to you, but it continues to come into your inbox because people are using the reply all button when responding. I hate when that happens. Uh, you want some peace and quiet. Uh, what can you do to quiet the message notifications coming in? Um, select the message and use the M keyboard shortcuts. Very cool. The person that does that all the time 
is our is our biology teacher. Mr. Menon answered the same questions via email over and over from parents at the beginning of the of every school year. How might Mr. Menon become more efficient in using his communications with Gmail? Right. So we did, we talked about this. Right. You don't want to keep answering the same questions. What do you do? Right. The template. You save the template. Add the Save to Drive extension to your Chrome browser. After installing it, check out the options for it. Which of the following file types um, could you save as a website? You, they, like here, they want you to, to go in and actually try it on your own. I'm just going to give you the answer though. But they want you to, to try this on your own to, to see. And you know, those are the answers. But you know this one. You know some of these questions here. I'm just giving you the answer. But they want you to actually, you know, you got to go out there and do it on your own. Okay, which of the following Chrome apps will run offline and also work with Google Drive? Cami and Google Drawings. And how you would find these answers? You would go to the Google, uh, you know, go to the sorry, the Chrome Web Store, and then you know, filter for runs offline, filter for works with Drive. Okay, and then, you know, you'll see them pop up. Or just, you know, go to, you know, check these out and see if they do. You know, look them up. How could you help students find apps and extensions for Chrome? Hmm. Share links to apps and extensions via email. Okay, that, that was that one slide that I had all that information on. I recommend to your domain administrator to push apps, right? That's what we said, right? A lot of times that, that's really what it is. Let, tell them to push it to the students. Use Google Plus to share apps and extensions. Okay. Uh, what can you use add-ons? Uh, what can, um, what can you use add-ons for forms, sheets, docs to do? Grade quizzes, table of contents, mail merge, and change response choices on multiple uh, on multiple choice questions. All right, all right, we're we're done here, but I'm you know. I'm gonna go in, in the description here. I'm gonna go back and, and, and make sure nothing you know was updated and things like that. So I'm gonna go back and review this. I'm gonna compare it to the to the Google to the Google trainers uh, you know uh, the Google Skill Shops training. I just updated this. I don't know, not not too long ago, but, but it, it's always always changing. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna go back and see if there, there's any little differences and things like that. But uh, all right, tomorrow I'm gonna try to do Unit Four. I'm gonna try to bang all these units out and get them done. I don't know within a week. I'll All right, so um, I had to I had to cut this, edit this off real quick, and, and go back and show you. There was two changes to it, and when I saw Google Groups, I, I know it's coming back, but if you look at the the Skill Shop, uh, the Skill Shop uh, training, you know the Google the Google uh, Teacher Training Center, um, two of these things were changed, and there was the ones that said Google Groups. Excuse me, that said Google Plus. So I have to go back and change it here, and I'll show you which one they were. Here, I uh, I had just shown you this one right here, and it said uh, I, I believe it said a, a Google uh, Google Plus or something like that. But it's been changed too. So this is number seven here on Unit Three Review to help students find apps and extensions at the Chrome Web Store, which is actually pretty obvious. So you know Google's just trying to get rid of that and just put something else in there, and they already had that selected, so they just put something easy. So how can you help students find apps and extensions for Chrome? Help students find apps and extensions for Chrome at the web store. Um, and I'll, sh you know, I'll, I'll show you here, like complete unit. Review. Review response details. And here, how can you help students find apps and extensions for Chrome? Help students find apps and extensions, you know, so I mean, it's like obvious. And, and they just wanted to replace the other one that I had with the, with the Google Plus here. Okay. I didn't get this wrong because I don't know it. I just didn't fill it out. Who, you know, who cares? And then the other one, where is it? Leave. Right. And this is the other change here. It said 
it had originally said something with Google Plus, and um, it says, how can you share uh, apps and extensions with your class even if you don't have Chromebooks through Google Groups? It had previously said Google Plus, and they changed it to Google, to Google Groups because, you know, they got rid of Google Plus, but they're, they're trying to bring it back, I hear, um, you know, for Google Educator Groups and things like that. But um, so it would be Google Groups. Okay, so those were two. So the two ones that said Google Plus, that when I had just went over this presentation, the one got changed to Google Groups, and the other one just said, you know, use the Chrome Web Store. All right, so I just wanted to, to clarify those, you know, make sure there's no mistakes here. All right, so back to what I was saying. I'm going to try to get all this done, um, you know, it's what, 11 units? I'm going to try to get it done as fast as I can for you. Have a nice day.